to like comment on this video but most importantly make sure you guys like and comment under this video big time make sure you do that so let's dive into another video today on who is in my top five best shooting guards from the 2000s so at number five i got no other than the half man half amazing air canada vince carter Man, he was a culture icon for Canada in the 2000s when he played with Toronto. Uh, pretty much, I feel like real basketball heads, including myself and all the people who watched and played the game of basketball, understand that Vince Carter was more than just a dunker. Of course, the greatest dunker of all time we have ever seen in the game of basketball, especially in the NBA. And um, now I feel like with his offensive game, he was just as poised with his shot selection, the way he scored the basketball. Uh, can shoot the three, got the post better way, can drive in, finish with either hand, left or right hand, got the three point shots. Vince Carter was 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 just as entertaining as he can be. Another a walking highlight reel waiting to happen. And you know, of course with Vince Carter, you know, like I say, he I feel like everything about his game was just pretty natural and was gifted. You know, some people say he lacked the, the, the mentality of the Kobe's and the MJ's, the killer instinct, but, you know, he did what he can do with Toronto, but he basically put Toronto on the map. Excuse me, and basically with him, you know, being just one of the most electrifying, entertaining players from that decade, you know, he still carried that same type of aura off to New Jersey, uh, I think he still put up a good 20, I was 24, 25 points per game with uh, with the New Jersey Nets playing along with Jason Kidd and Richard Jefferson. So uh, Vince Carter, man, he, you know, still did his thing in the 2000s with the Toronto and New Jersey. You know, still polarizing people, still being a walking bucket. Like I said, he was a, another good three-level scorer. You know, he had nice handles i mean vince Carter was i mean you look at his highlight reel all around i mean he's arguably he cannot be below number four number five with anybody list at all you know because in my opinion yes he definitely underachieved but he was he, he was definitely a walking buggy and entertaining and like i said he put toronto on the map once he arrived in the nba at number four who i got no other than the lazy eye killer assassin, my favorite player of all time, no other than T Mac Tracy McGrady. You know, um, one of the best hazy pull ups, one of the best scores I've ever seen. Um, you know, pretty much, he, I think he had a good two to four year stretch, or maybe two to three year stretch, that a lot of people were saying he was a lot better than Kobe Bryant. And, you know, I remember as a kid, you know, pretty much hearing those debates outside, playing basketball with my brother, and hearing the barbershop talks. So, you know, Tracy McGrady, man, he, another guy that was a walking bucket. Um, like I said, with being 6'8", 6'9", or maybe some say he was, he was 6'10", but maybe 6'9", you know, got guard-like handles, got good passing ability, um, can score anywhere on the floor, smooth as a jump shot, just like his cousin, Vince Carter. Um, you know, he was very athletic, can dunk with either hand, finish with either hand. Got one got one of the best acrobatic layup finishes I've ever seen at that guard position, especially for his height. And, you know, like I said, he has a very unguardable, unblockable jump shot. Got one of the best one-two dribble pull-ups signature shots I've ever seen in my life. Of course, you know, that's one of his patented moves. And, you know, Tracer and Grady, like I said, man, he was in that big debate. Well, who was a better guard, him or Kobe Bryant? And, you know, you know, Tracy McGrady, man, he's, you know, and, you know, I feel like just like Rich Carter and them two, they kind of underachieved with more trust, 
But more so on Tracy McGrady, he was dealing with injuries, you know, in his prom, during his prom, unfortunately. And, you know, he still did his thing in, um, in Houston with Yao Ming, uh, still making clutch buckets, pretty much the same player, just a little bit less athletic, but, you know, you know, he was still him. And, you know, Tracy McGrady, man, he, man, like I said, if it wasn't for injuries, man, he would be definitely being top five players of all time, in my opinion, because... 6 down can defend, can rebound, can shoot the three ball, mid-range, the handles, the finishing ability, the passing. He had it all. He really had the total package because he made everything so effortless. It was smooth. He was a smooth walking bucket. So he deserved to be my number four on my list. No doubt about it. And who I got number three. No other than the answer, Alan Iverson. Like I said in my last video, uh about him on my other video the previous the biggest culture icon in the 2000s the influence the greatest pound for pound player the smallest guy on the court with the biggest heart and you know you know it's all of these guys on this list they pretty much can really score on all three levels i i probably wasn't well one of the players on my list is not the biggest three-point shooters but um he still knocked down threes. He was a good, not good. He was a great mid-range, mid-range scorer. He knew how to create space for himself. Isolation player can cross you up in a minute. You know, can finish on bigger defenders. Ferocious, relentless finisher at the rim. Be him being only like six one, and you know, I think like people just underestimate how really good he was scoring on the inside, despite of him being such a smaller. Uh, player and I don't think people quite understand the the magnitude of that and you know how AI you know regardless of where he was at he was still gonna give his all 110 percent both ends of the floor um you know and then what he did with Denver like I said in my last video um you know him and Melo was a good scoring duo but they didn't do much in the postseasons but like I said I'll announce you man I wouldn't be mad if someone put my number one. Like I said, just the impact and influence, the entertainment, and he was a walking bucket, and he always gave it his all every single night being the smallest man on the court. So he deserves to be number three on my list. And number two, no other than the Flash, Dwayne freaking Wade. Dude, man, he had one of the best step backs, crossover step back moves into a mid range shot I've ever seen. You know, he. One of the greatest, one of the greatest uh, slitherer, slithering finishers. If I'm saying that right, <laughs> you know he he was very elusive with his movement, very fluid. You know the quickness, getting to the rim. I love the way he split the double team, especially when he was in his prom. Uh, he was great at that. You know, he was just one. It, as much as he, as much he was dominant on offense his defensive effort was top notch one if not the best shot blocking shooting guard i think he's the number one on the list of all time shooting guards with the most blocks and you know that's how good a defender he was a good on ball defender he made a few all defensive teams um the one way was an all-around shooting guard man with the vision with the handles he got to the rack uh made clutch buckets he was a clutch player in his prom you know, dude had it all, and you know, I say he was robbed the 0809 MVP race. I think LeBron won it that year, but Wade averaged like 30 points per game that year, and he was completely dominant on that team with the Heat. And then number one on this list, no other than the man himself, the Black Mamba, the Afro Kobe, Kobe being Bryant number one's on my list, one of the greatest players of all time my goat uh literally enough said about him we all know what he can do you see it in this highlight you see it you know i mean it, it speaks for itself it literally speaks for itself uh so that's literally about it about my top five shooting guards of all time uh top five shooting guards in the 2000s so make sure you guys like comment share under this video I love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Jay Boogie is out.